Welcome to the Super Nerd Factory podcast. The factory will be polluting the airwaves in 3, 2, 1. Enjoy. Welcome to the Audio Pollution Podcast episode 113. Today is October 5th, 2015. I'm your host, John. And my first mate is here, Josh. Ahoy, matey. And our stowaway, Matt's here. Grab your life vest. It's going to be a strange journey. That it is. It's always strange. Because we're on a boat today. Uh-oh. S- sailing the seven seas. Well, we're just being swept away by a hurricane, so. A questionable hurricane. That's true. It kind of petered out. Joaqu- Joaquin didn't deliver. We're, we're on a boat just in case shit gets real. That's true. We're always prepared. Plus, we like boats. I do. Uh, I would rock a boat. Are we on like a, like a paddle boat? Oh, man, we're on like a cruise ship. Oh, we're on a whole cruise ship? We're on the SS Super Super Nerd Factory. I haven't noticed. Are there other people on the boat? No, don't worry about the other people. We don't talk about them? No. All right. <laughs> but what, what I, you... I won't ask any more questions about it. Sorry. <laughs> but what do you say we move on to uh, what you've been up to? I can go into a couple things because I didn't play any games this week, but I watch a lot of movies. I watched Vacation. Are you a fan of the Vacation movies? I am. Did you see the new one yet? I did it. It's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's good. Like... If you thought the trailer was funny, it pretty much, it sets the pace of with how that movie is. Okay, like they just didn't show the best stuff in the trailer? <clears throat> no, they definitely did not, but they sh- absolutely showed the proper humor that is throughout the movie. That's good. Can I compare it to uh, 22 Jump Street, where they're kind of making fun of the fact that it's a sequel? Mm-hmm. Well, the way it's funny because it is a sequel because it's Rusty, the son grown up in his family. And they're going to Wally World like they did in the first vacation movie. Yeah. And they're essentially talking like, hey, well, let's go let's go to Wally World. And the kids are like, I never heard of Wally World. And he's like, well, I went there before. That He always talked about that vacation and they kind of make fun of like, mm-hmm. I never heard about that one. Well, this is a sequel. It's like the same thing, but it's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they purposely poke fun at it. And it works really well. It's funny pretty consistently all the way through. That's good. And... uh I watched The Visit. Jeff talked about this on the last podcast. That is a good movie. It sounded really good, actually. That's M. Night Shyamalan, right? Correct. Yeah, I heard this was actually supposed to be an awesome it, movie it, by him for once. It, it was definitely one of his better movies. Cool. I would say if you liked Sixth Sense and Signs, it's like on that quality. It's a, certainly a different style of movie, but in my opinion, those were good movies, so I'll link them to there. Not like that village bullshit. And um, I talked about this last week, but Wayward Pines... I did end up finishing it, and I also recommend watching that because that was really good. It has like a messed up ending that kind of keeps you thinking. It kind of makes you wonder a little bit more. They're kind of talking about making a sequel to it, but I hope they leave it as it is because it's it's just one of those endings where you want to know more, but I think they should just keep the mystery. Yeah. Like definitely. they should just leave it where it is. I believe the TV show went through all three books. I'm pretty sure it didn't do just one. I think it went through all three books, and I hope they just end it there because it was the right kind of messed up. That's good. I watched something. This is something similar that we talked to. So you were you're a fan of Primer. I'm a fan of Primer. Do you know what Primer is, Matt? I do not. It's a time travel movie. It's a B time travel movie that's actually based around the actual science of how time travel would work. Yeah, the guy, the guy that wrote it is like a physicist or something, and he just wrote a script, like the theoretical theory of time okay. travel. Yeah, they literally so wrote not... the script around the theory of how time travel would work, it's, not the it's other It's really way good. You should check it out. Okay. It's one of those movies you have to watch two, three times to really get the hang of what's happening. It's not happening. just like, here's, here's a time travel machine, we're going to go. It actually tries to explain through science how that's feasible. Yeah, essentially. That's neat. But it's a lot of math. Okay. It's like literally yeah, there's like tons of math, math geeks sitting around a table talking about how they're building this thing. It's done extremely well. Well, that guy, the writer and director of that, came out with another movie a couple years ago. It's called Upstream Color. Don't watch that movie because my brain still hurts on what happened. The movie made no freaking sense whatsoever. <laughs> the movie starts off with some a girl being kidnapped and they put in like this worm into her bloodstream. Well, they make her swallow this worm and essentially they're able to... It almost like hypnotizes her where they're able to give her commands and... It starts off with one character giving her the commands, and then he kind of lets her go eventually, and it picks up like a year later, and her credit's destroyed because of what he did to her and all the stuff. It starts bringing other characters, but it never explains what their role in the movie was. <laughs> it has the strangest dialogue I have ever heard in a movie. I'm not sure in certain times if they're 
being funny or ironic or they're just strange characters and the movie never explains like anything don't watch that movie you give that a thumbs down absolutely i can't give a movie more thumbs down than that wow it, compared to primer or maybe i just need to watch upstream color about six more times and then i'll get it maybe it just i don't i did not like the story in that movie it just didn't <laughs> click with me and i picked a random pick it's called the last days and it is a spanish movie it's so it's subtitled and one thing I don't watch many Spanish subtitle movies except for um what's um what's his name that always does Guillermo del Toro yeah like his are the few movies I watch that you actually have to do subtitles on and because it's funny because when I think about this I keep hearing the voices and I keep thinking I'm watching like a soccer match when people get like excited <laughs> that's racist but maybe a little bit <laughs> the idea of it is one day. As people are going, it's that thing where people don't like being in open spaces. It's like a mental issue. and Like agoraphobia? Is that what it's called? Well, agoraphobia is like the fear of leaving your house. It's a link to that. So essentially, people get to a point where they don't want to go outside. It's happening. You hear these small reports of people doing it little by little to a point where like, if you go outside, like people just straight up go into like panic attacks and have heart attacks because they can't mentally handle it. So you're saying someone that has slight agoraphobia don't ever watch this movie? No, no. It's And it's all about that. But what's really cool about this is some people are at work and stuff when this happens and nobody understands what's going on. Like the power eventually goes out and they're at work for a couple weeks and stuff. They finally figure out, well, there, there's a subway system. So they're like literally digging down into the subway system so they can kind of link out. It's seriously Metro. It's Metro the movie because there's like societies in the throughout the buildings that are connected to the Metro system. It's a really cool idea. It's done really well. It's got a high production value. It's got a really interesting story. And it has certain points where it's certainly movie logic. Like, you just got to accept certain things on it. If you like post-apocalyptic stuff, I would actually say this is one of the better ones I've ever seen. It's done really well. Where can people watch it? You can watch it on Netflix. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, that's pretty much it for me. I mean, we started watching uh, Black Mirror. Yeah, we talked about it last week how Netflix picked up Black Mirror. Matt, have you ever heard of the show? No. The so, microphone can't pick up shaking heads. I know. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. No. It, so it's done in the way of, like, it's single contained episodes, nothing links to each other. And it's sort of Twilight Zone-esque. Yeah. And that show is messed up. Yeah, it's extremely messed up. I don't know how much you enjoyed it. I stopped watching it at episode four. That's where I stopped as well. Okay. I'm going to say it. I don't like the show. I think it's too long. If it was half hour shows, I think they would nail it. There's too many slow points in it. Yeah, the the first episode, like I was like, wow, that first episode is really messed up. Like it, it's super messed up. Yeah. But, the, fir- the first episode is the best episode, I think. But we checked it out because Netflix picked it up for series. And the first two seasons are only six episodes to get all together. So the first season's three and the second's three. But Netflix picked it up for 12 episodes. Yeah, and all the episodes are based around, I don't know, how would you put it? It's based around technology, but... Yeah, they're they're satirizing technology use, like, in the 21st century. So, generally, there's, much like Twilight Zone, there's some kind of messed up twist in it. I'd like to check it out just to see what I I think about it. Yeah, I mean, it's done well. I'll give it that. The writer said, like, it it is a British show, but since it's been picked up by Netflix, he has to kind of write it for like more world acceptance i guess because it was a lot of just like here here's something that maybe only british people would understand like a joke or a reference yeah, it's to. a very british show it, it's all right it's worth checking out the one episode i particularly like and maybe it was episode four the one with the the guy dying and it's like a computer taking over your personality like it yeah. reads your email and creates your personality so people can like email you and it emails how you would respond like to help you cope with death that's weird. That was a that was an interesting one, but I will say, and slight spoilers, I wish they would have ended it a little early, which I'll, I'll just say, there's a cliff sequence. Do you know what I'm talking about, John? Yeah. They should have ended it there without showing what happened. Yeah, they just, yeah I agree. That, I think they should end it there, because that actually would have been my favorite episode if, if they didn't add in the extra two minutes on to the end. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, people like it. It's but, done well, so everyone likes different stuff. It's just a little too long for my taste. But what have you been up to, Matt? 
Uh, not much. Um, me and my wife went out uh, October 1st to go see the band Churches perform in Philadelphia. Um, what kind of music is that? It's like uh, electronic. Like techno? They're, uh, they're like kind of like electronic rock almost. Electronic, I guess you'd call it electronic pop, something like that. Okay. I never um, heard of them. Actually. Oh, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I saw them uh, in 2013, actually, right before their first album dropped. I uh, had no idea what to right expect. Right before their first album? Yeah, it was like uh, two days before the album officially released. Um, I had to download a leak just to be able to uh, Uh-oh. sing along at the show. I bought six copies of the album. I'm, I'm a pretty big <laughs> just, fan. For, for so, every song you download it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, for people listening, he's probably not joking. This <laughs> this man has a huge library of CDs. Well, no, actually, I bought records, too. Um, they had bootleg records. They're official that I ended up picking up. Uh, but yeah, they had a sold-out show in Philly um, for their new album. I think it came out the 25th, Every Open Eye. It's awesome. Like, are they catchier? Or? Oh, yeah. I'll let you listen to some of their stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely check them out. But they have, like, it's not like a normal, every time you go to like a concert or a show, you know, it's just the band on stage, but they've got, like, huge screens and stuff like that that have like, almost like... Not like an electric show. Ca- kind like- of, yeah. But uh, it's not, like, straight techno, like John was saying. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, I'll definitely check them out. What was that random band we drove to, like, Menlo Park, New Jersey, for you to meet? Was that Churches? <laughs> no, that wasn't Churches. That was, uh, oh my god. That was Honorary Title, wasn't it? I think that was Honorary Title. That's like, hey, I want to go to New Jersey, and this guy, like, the lead singer is doing a signing at some record store. Yeah. So we drove, like, two and a half hours away, so Matt could go meet this guy, and there's me. I'm like, I have no idea who this person is. Did you meet him? Yeah, it was awesome. I actually, I in the store... They had a single that was strapped with the album. I ended up buying it, and I had him, I had him sign that. And he was like, "What is this? I didn't even know this exists." Mike, dude, I just bought it in that aisle right there. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I don't know if it had like a couple acoustic tracks that were never released. Um, I don't know where they got it from. Do you remember who we saw after that at the mall, though? No, we saw Fatality. I have no oh, idea yeah, what you're yeah, talking yes, about. No, yes, we did. Fate, the, 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 the gamer. Yeah, he was, oh, oh, the yeah, pro gamer. Yeah. yeah, the pro gamer, Fatality, had like a booth at the Menlo Park Mall. So selling. random. He was like... That's a really random. <laughs> he was like hawking like his... Does he live card. in New Jersey? I Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it wasn't like... He was just doing his mall tour? Some kind of PC p- peripheral. It was like it was like his mouse or keyboard or, oh, or something. Oh, okay. So he was, he's doing... Yeah, but, but they had a whole bunch of PCs like set up in like the middle of the mall. And you yeah. could like go and play a game. Yeah, yeah. It was so random though. I'm like, fatality. <laughs> Funny story about somebody not knowing their own stuff. I bought a Death by Stereo t-shirt on the internet one time, which I thought was an official shirt. And I went to a Death by Stereo show. The guitar player walked by me and he looked at my shirt. He's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> He's like, where the hell did you get that shirt? Like, I don't know on the internet. It's like somebody made fake Death by Stereo t-shirt. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Because that band like straight up like designs their own shirts, <laughs> yeah. So it's bad when they don't understand where it came from. Have you been up to anything else, Matt? Play any fun games? No, not too many games recently. I've been kind of busy. So what have you been doing besides piloting this wonderful vessel? Oh well. Do you pilot boats? Yeah, you can pilot a boat. Yeah. Well, I've been. Nah. I've been dealing with random doctor's appointments. Ah, that sounds like fun. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. I, I went to my general practitioner. I then made like 19 appointments for specialists. Did Doctor Who inspire you to go to the doctor? No, not at all. I had to go. Did you make any Doctor Who puns while you were there? No, because it was really <laughs> early in the morning when I had to go. <laughs> you, should, you should have made something. John just wanted to go back to sleep. No, I had to come home and work. Ugh, that's, that's awful. Worse. But I had to go to the hospital and do a barium swallow while they took a pictures while I was drinking the barium to like take pictures of my esophagus. Let me tell you, have you ever drank barium? No. It's fucking horrible. It sounds all, awful. Yeah, I've never had it either, but I, I know it's like a chalky, right? It tastes like chalk mixed with mud where they spray like an aerosol, like orange flavor on it. It was probably just something he mixed in the back. He's like, bet you I can get this guy to drink this shit. Probably. Is that that stuff that they put the dye in so then they can take like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I, I had to... I drank 30 ounces of this shit, mm. which is a hell of a lot. Because I had to keep drinking it while he was taking x-rays of me drinking it. I had to stand. I, like, chugged two cups of it. And then I had to lay down and drink it. Like, they, like, gave me a cup with a straw. And I had to, like, chug it while he was taking pictures while I was laying down. You should have asked him if you could take some to go. Oh, God. 
this. And, and we, then, could, we could have been drinking it right now. And then, of course, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> chugging it. And as I'm chugging it, it's like running down my cheek. And I have a beard. So it's like stuck all in my beard. <laughs> and it like hard, it like got hard as a rock. I had to like come home and like take a washcloth and like scrub for like two minutes to get the shit off. Oh, you slob. It was gross. And that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but then I, I had white poop afterwards. <laughs> How white are we talking? Like white. Speaking. Like I, it looks like Snow White. Do you ever see like a white dog turd? Like what that sat like, like the a, sun for a Like week. a dog that just ate like a paper towel roll? No, like, <laughs> like, like I, the stuff that's been outside for like two months. Okay. We're talking that. Okay. It looked like that. So it looked like a moldy poop. And they didn't want to flush because barium's a heavy metal. <laughs> I don't know if you guys uh, have seen it at all. But they have a, was it a hollow whopper it's called? It's a Halloween whopper with uh, yeah, the black one. I did try that. Yeah. Um, I shat green uh, yes. for three yes. days. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> I did too. <laughs> All right. I was wondering where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> so I went there, which I never go to Burger King, but I, I'm like, okay, I want the, it's like just a black roll. It's the same. It's a whopper, right? There's nothing special. Yeah, and no, it's got a, it's a, it's A1 sauce. Yeah. And I ordered two of them, one for me and one for my wife. One came in the Halloween wrapper, but it was the regular Whopper. How do you fuck that up? <laughs> it's literally a different color. <laughs> like, it was straight up. I took a picture of it. I'll, I'll have to tweet it on my account, but how do you mess that up, really? Uh, I went to Wendy's the other day, and my dad and I ordered food. They forgot his sandwich. Like, Ooh. just fries? We ordered four things. I got a meal, so I got fries and, like, chicken nuggets, and he got fr- or he got chili and a sandwich. They forgot the sandwich. Like, we're walking out the door, and it took them 20 minutes. There was they were they weren't waiting on anyone else. I don't know. It it scares me. It was they put it in the Halloween wrapper, but it was the same. <laughs> Maybe they ran out of the bread and didn't want to let you down. <laughs> How do you mess that up, really? Come on, come on, Burger King. If, if you want my honest opinion, your wife got the better end of the deal because she didn't shit green for the next couple of days. <laughs> no, because what well, what we did was we cut them in half and we split. Ah, uh, okay. I'll have to ask her if she did or not. <laughs> I didn't have a conversation. I thought maybe it was just me. So if anyone wants to shit green, <laughs> eat the new burger. Or if you're going to shit white, drink barium. Yeah. What if you mix them together? No. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Tune in next week while John's on video eating black, black Whopper burgers and barium. Oh, this past week, there's been like 19 squirrels that committed suicide by like touching two of the power lines at once. I oh, really? My power has gone out at least 15 times this week. Are the squirrels trying to take you down? No, it's like, it's up the road. I'll be, I'll be sitting down here, and you just hear, bang! And then the power goes out, and then it comes back. It's like, oh, no squirrel. Fucking squirrels, man. They're crazy. Squirrels are crazy. There's rats with fuzzy tails. I feel True. bad for them. Why do you feel bad for the damn squirrels? All the squirrels. I mean, you, you people with your power. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to gather nuts and shit. Yeah. Oh, but. I really have, well, I shouldn't say I haven't been playing a lot. I've been dabbling in a lot of games because I went hardcore into researching Warhammer 40k this past week. <laughs> I feel like you spent a lot of hours on this. I did. I watched a lot of lore videos. So I'm like, like, hey, John, did you work on this on the website? No, I was watching Warhammer videos. <laughs> I was just, I'm just trying to learn the lore and like how you make that barrier to entry into playing Warhammer. Yeah, it's a pretty hardcore game to get into from. Yeah, man, that's. That's got to be up there for one of the most hardcore, right? Yeah. Like, to get a starter pack, you know, it's probably about 100 150 bucks just to get in. So, it's pretty expensive just for a hobby. It's so, not a hobby. That's a lifestyle. That's true. Yeah. In doing so, I was like, I wonder if I own any Warhammer video games. And I own, like, 20 of them. <laughs> so, you own all of them. Wasn't there one that came out, uh, I think it was Xbox 360, where you play as one of the uh, Marines? Warhammer Space Marines. Is that what it's called? Yep. Space Marines. I thought there was a demo. Space Marines. (laughs) There was a demo out for that game, I remember, and I actually downloaded it. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. In general, people thought it was a good game. Yeah, it's a solid game. It's it's a Gears of War clone. Okay. Like, you you run around, you shoot orcs, and then you have a chain sword. You say, come get some. No. In space. Just the orcs say, (laughs) Space Marines. (laughs) Because they're all space British. Did that actually sound like that? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Like every orc you run into, they're like, Spice Marine! That's racist. I said, I'm, go- I'm buying that game. It, it, it's definitely a, it's a solid game. No, well, yeah, you like Gears of War, so why not? And I like uh, Space. Yeah. It's it's a Space Gothic tale. Sold. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> that's got everything you want. 
I own this game. It just came out, so I bought it. But it's called Warhammer 40k Regicide. It's like battle chess. Is it the Reggie in the full effect expansion? Yes. The, the, the music just plays all throughout the game. <laughs> With- and it goes, come on, half a chicken, come on. <laughs> half a chicken. <laughs> bark, bark. <laughs> you can kill players on the board by either performing chess moves or you get a, there's a movement phase where in the movement phase, if you can take over someone from a chess move, yes, it, that's like an insta kill. Or you can actually attack the other like players on the board. Like, so you can shoot them. So it takes like three or four rounds to actually kill like a character. You use rulers for that game, don't you? Well, like for attack distances and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, this is just like straight up chess. It's oh, like, it's oh, like if okay. you have line of sight, you can pretty much shoot them. Okay. But it's pretty cool. That sounds good. There's not much to it. It's just chess. It sounds better than chess. But that's pretty much all the games I've been playing. What do you say we do the question of the week? Uh, so the question of the week this week was, since it's being fall, what's your favorite pumpkin spice item? As the stowaway, Matt, you can um, start. I'm going to be weird here. I like the... Uh, what's new? I'm sorry. I like the uh, the Japanese uh, Kit Kats. They come in different flavors. They have a pumpkin pie. It's pumpkin spice pie. Something like that. Pumpkin. Amazing. Fantastic. Get them. I think Amazon has them. Get them. Yeah, Amazon, blah, 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 blah. Amazon does have them. I don't like pumpkin flavored things. Neither do I. High five. You guys suck. Great, great question. <laughs> yeah, I like how he came up with a question and both of us don't like it. <laughs> but uh, the Kit Kat bars are good. I saw this ad on Tumblr. This is what made me think of the question. It's a Starbucks ad and it says, have you had your PSL yet today? Your pumpkin spice yeah. latte. Yeah, it's, it's bad. When Starbucks gets in on it, it's, it's bad. But we did get you know a couple of responses. You know, people like their pumpkin beers. Pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin beers was a particularly popular one. I didn't see any pumpkin pies. No, no, no pumpkin pies. I'm trying to think what else other people said. Like, th- there's so many pumpkin things out there for fall nowadays. It's ridiculous. The, the trick is finding something that doesn't have pumpkin flavor. That's why I just don't leave my house. <laughs> they <laughs> have, stay away from the pumpkins. Did you guys see they have pumpkin uh, tomato sauce, like a tomato pumpkin sauce for your like spaghetti? Yeah, for spaghetti. Like, it's everywhere now. If you want pumpkin, there's something for you. That doesn't surprise that, me. That sounds disgusting. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's Did at, you try it? It's at jo- no, there are certain places I Don't won't even Don't say like, no, like that's weird. I'm sure you, you thought about I it. I did. I did think about it. I, I opted to go for the syrup instead because syrup is great. Did you actually buy pumpkin syrup? Yes. Is, and it, that was is good. it pumpkin spice syrup or just straight up pumpkin? I believe it's pumpkin spice syrup. Are we talking like a hint, an aftertaste of pumpkin? No, or? it's it's pumpkin. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if Whatever I'd you like pour that. it on, imagine like you were eating pumpkin with that. Okay, item. so you could just flavor your own items. Yeah. So whatever's I, already not pumpkin flavor. I just drink it out the bottle. <laughs> so it's an energy drink of some sort. Yes. Matt's slowly dying. <laughs> 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 but with that being said, what do you say we move into the news? All right, so big announcement last week. Doctor Who's getting a spinoff show. I guess they're calling it Class for Now. Uh, it's going to be written by Patrick Ness, who's a teenage novelist. Uh, I'm not familiar with his work because I'm Man. not I'm not a teenager. You're a teenager at heart. That's true. No, I'm like seven at heart. Yeah, they, they compare this to uh, pretty much all the popular, like, what, is it, what the hell is it called? The Maze Runner, Hunger Games, Harry Potter. Yeah. They, it's in that vein of action and storytelling. Yeah, it's going to focus at the... On the school that Claire works at. Okay, Claire. I actually didn't pick up on that. Yeah, it's going to focus around, I guess, the kids from that school and like what they run into. They really don't have anything laid out. Sounds annoying. But they said it's going to be eight 45-minute episodes, and it'll be releasing late 2016. Uh, Doctor Who has a lot of spinoffs. I mean, we got they, they must have at least five by now. Yeah, I would, I would assume this will probably do okay. For eight episodes, that it should do okay. Next thing, Star Wars, it was... I don't know if it was leaked, but Kathleen Kennedy was out there and she said the Star Wars film, like the core Star Wars films, the saga films, if you will, they're keeping that in tradition of following the Skywalker family. So it's not going to go off into its own adventure. Yeah. So with the two characters that we know of, Ray and Finn, one of them has to be tied to, you know, either Leia or Luke. Yeah. Like they're probably either son or daughter. Or both of them. Or both of them. Uh, But Kathleen Kennedy said, um, quote, The saga films focus on the Skywalker family saga. The stories follow a linear narrative that connects to the previous six films. The Force Awakens follows Return of the Jedi and continues the generational story. 
But then she also went to point out that the anthology films offer opportunities to explore fresh characters, new storylines, and a variety of genres, you know, inside the Star Wars galaxy. Which I thought was pretty cool that they're kind of keeping it like, all right, this is what Star Wars has always been. They're keeping that. And then they have their, you know, anthology films where they can do whatever the hell they want. I guess it makes sense to make sure you have some kind of connection across the board. Yeah. And Tim Rose, who played Admiral Akbar. It's a trap. He's reprising his role in Force Awakens. You, sold. Do you think he says the line? He has to. Yeah. He, uh, has some, to. he has to. Some way, shape, or form, he's getting that it's a something in there. It's like, it's a trap. Oh, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. But, you know, they're going to make him say something dumb. He's going to be like in three scenes, he's going to be everyone's favorite character. He's just going to say, just do it. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> MacGyver's getting a TV series remake. What do you feel about MacGyver? I loved MacGyver. Yeah, it's not a bad show. I don't know if I'd care to watch it again. Well, even a remake. What if I tell you that James Wan is going to be producing it? He's the guy who did the last <laughs> Fast and Furious movie. I believe he also does Insidious. I don't know. Yeah, so, so he's just going to make it. A MacGyver show where he builds cars and scary monsters. <laughs> the scariest shit. <laughs> okay, I'm in. It's going to be the, the scariest MacGyver ever. MacGyver builds the th- the further. He he builds a car to escape the ghosts. Yep, done, sold. We did it. Yeah, we, we did his job for him. The Terminator mo- movies have been placed on indefinite hold with how bad Genesis did. Thank God. <laughs> did you see the new one? I don't care anymore. How many times do you have to see the way the world's going to end on this day? I Six. Can't. Six. How about, six how about, six how, is the number. How about we move forward? We already know. You w- know what I mean? Would you like them to remake the series? I, no. I don't, want, I don't want to see it anymore. Would you like a spinoff series? No. They've done that, haven't they? Was the one with the female, with the female uh, <laughs> That's right, Terminator person? It, was it failed? <laughs> yeah. Well, three. That no, was, no, was it a series, wasn't it? Oh, oh you mean ter- the Terminator TV show? Yes. Yeah, the girl from Serenity. I don't even remember that. Like that show was, was on bad. the air for like three episodes. Because it was awful. People <laughs> people generally liked it. I've never watched, and I don't care to. Yeah, I, f- I completely forgot about that show. Yeah. All right. So I guess they really have done everything. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and last last thing in the movie TV news: Attack That's on amazing. Titan has a subtitle disaster. I don't know if you guys seen it. So they made a live action Attack on Titan. Yeah. It's being torn apart. Like they're saying it's horrible. And this was before it came to America. Well, it finally launched in American theaters. And there's a scene in it where the subtitles are broken. And it just keeps saying the same line through like a 15 minute segment. Okay. <laughs> how, how do you, how do you make, how do you let that happen? Because like, so the guy was on lunch break and he's like, all right, my friends are going to hang out. I really just want to get through this. <laughs> Do you not have any quality assurance whatsoever? That's like okay, we just put this shit in. Let's sit here and watch well, it, make sure. Well, it actually... Probably like Americans, pretty dumb. They don't care. They'll, they'll read the same word on the no, screen. It, it was probably sent to some. They're just outsourced... the Japanese people are really weird. <laughs> but even it was sent to like some outsourced studio, probably just to do the subtitles for it. But even they should be able to know that putting the same words over and over again <laughs> yeah, isn't good. Isn't cool. I believe it's the same team that made the Batman for PC. <laughs> wow <laughs> they're just batting a thousand <laughs> well speaking of batman warner brothers says that'll be back on steam in october do you think it comes out the story i read they patched the game that's on steam right now so if you own it they patched it which i guess stabilized it for people having issues yeah and they're saying that it was hopeful that they're going to release the game back onto steam in october do people care anymore why why would you go back to that game? It's been out since June. Are you going to play it? I own it on Steam. But you never tried it, right? I, I loaded it up and like ran around, and I didn't have any issues. I okay. never played it, though. You're like, yeah, this is great. I'm not it. playing it anyway. I have it, too. I, I played it just as long as John did. I ran around a little bit, and then I was it. Yeah, that, you got your Batman, Phil? I guess it. Okay. I, lo- I love Batman. Sound, Don't get me wrong. Sounds like a great game. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big B-Man fan, but hey. But we're just going to have a countdown timer until when Batman comes back. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll throw a party. That hot AAA title coming out three months late on PC. <laughs> the game of the year. Bigger game news. Microsoft buys Havoc. They were previously owned by Intel, and Havoc is the physics engine that's in... Every ton- game? Yeah, like tons of games. <laughs> Since the beginning of time? Yeah, Havoc's been around a long time. It's a weird sell, because that had to be making money for Intel. Probably, but Intel's probably trying to just get out of, like, they, they don't want to have that part of software distribution. Yeah. 
I wonder how Microsoft plays this out because Microsoft specifically said this is going to be used for that Azure system, their huge thing, yeah. essentially what Titanfall was running off of and any of their exclusives like Crackdown, which we'll see because that could be huge for Crackdown. I assume Crackdown was already using it. Yeah, the previous two did use it. But now they get they own it, so they can do whatever they want. You assume by default it is going to be on their servers, so any game running on it, instant yeah. goodness. Yeah. Um, Microsoft did say that they will continue to license it out. To oh, they, they did studios. say that? Yeah. So so soon they're just going to be licensing Minecraft and Havoc out to everyone. Yep, pretty much. Another Microsoft story, Twisted Pixel uh, left the game studio after, or they left Microsoft after four years of being there. Yeah, they wanted nothing to do with the Havoc system. That's true. They're just <laughs> like, we got Splosion Man. We made Loco Cycle let everyone hate it. <laughs> What's this Havoc crap? <laughs> They went out on a bad game. They're one of my favorite video game developers. I really like... I think I liked all their games except for Local Cycle. That game was horrible. Everyone's thinking that it's probably a reason that they're leaving just because that game performed so poorly. Yeah, I just wish it. Obviously, their new games are going to be out for like PlayStation and maybe Nintendo, but we'll see. Obviously, they're going to be coming out much stronger than they did. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe it's Local Cycle 2. Oh, God. Don't say that. I hope. <laughs> Matt's the only fan. Yay. Stephen Colbert is like he had a game week almost. He's had a lot of game personalities, and he had booty pie, booty pie. This was genius for him coming off of the shit storm that Jimmy Kimmel had for mocking people that play games on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, he nailed it. Well, I don't watch his show normally, but I watched it just for the sequence, just because I wanted to see how he played this off. He joked around a lot, but not in a assholeish way yeah he wasn't mocking them he was like he seemed like he was generally interested he was certainly joking around like one of the funnier things like so you play video games for a living what do you do to relax go to the office for a little bit <laughs> and how he introduced him like here's pootie pie the king of the internet the <laughs> the god of the people <laughs> and like everyone started like cheering and stuff it was done really well and he he asked good questions that it really made it funny of how the reactions were. And, and he dug into, why do you call yourself Pootie Pie? And he, he went into that and he's like, what's with the fingers? Because he always waves his fingers by his face and he says, Pootie Pie. And he says, I don't know. It just, it makes the name sound better. And, and then for the rest of the episode, Stephen Colbert was going, Stephen Colbert! <laughs> with the fingers by his face. He's like, you're right. That does make my name sound better. It was done really well. And he, it was a smart play on his end. Because Jimmy Kimmel lost all those people to him now. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Jimmy Fallon's been doing it for years with yep. all the, like, e post-E3 and it, stuff. it's worked. And then they recently, I think it was last night, they actually had the, uh, well, not last night, the most recent video game personality was the dude that owns, uh, what is the, the studio that makes? Hello Games. Yeah, they make, uh, they're coming out with No Man's Sky. And he asked some interesting questions on there, like, once again, he was seemed generally interested. He made some good jokes about it. He's nailing it. He's doing just as good of a job as Jimmy Kimmel did when he did it. Damn it. Jimmy Fallon did. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of train wrecks, Call of Duty f was live tweeting a fake terrorist attack. Oh, my on their God. Why would they do this? It was like, I think, five or six tweets that they sent out. That they're like, a, a bomb is reported to go off somewhere in Singapore. And they're like reporting details on it, and the news aggregators start picking up on it. Who in, who in but, marketing thought this would be a great idea? Like, but, well, who's dumb enough to think, all right, well, Call of Duty might be on to something? But like, then the last thing was they ended it with, "This is the type of intense action you can can expect from Blops Three. It was like hashtag Blops Three. Oh well, they got everyone's attention. Some people are saying like. That it's, it's super poor taste to do. Of course, to it do is. something I, like that. I agree. I agree that it is in poor taste. But once again, who's dumb enough to be like, oh yeah, Call of Duty's got the hot tips for news. Well, listen, week. it's not just that though. They had busted uh, that Lizard Squad. I think that group was called. It, it actually putting together terroristic uh, threats and putting things together inside video games. That's where they were meeting. So I mean, it definitely happens with. Oh yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. A thing and that I happens. bet you more people follow the Call of Duty twitter account than they do some new like some news organizations have i would say so yeah sure could have happened you know some people are questioning if it was unlawful of them to do this i i wouldn't go that far i would say it's it's, it's the just internet. stupid it's the yeah. internet yeah it, it's it's absolutely a stupid thing did they apologize or anything uh not that i saw yeah i think that i believe activision declined to 
uh, respond to like anything at the so moment. they haven't killed anyone yet yeah they're, uh, they they they're, ha- they haven't fired that intern well i bet you that intern's <laughs> oh, yeah, fired yeah, but. their pr team must uh, work right next to the subtitlers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like is this a good idea go for it just repeat well i'm just gonna i'm gonna hit repeat on this a few times and i'll write the call of duty tweets quick mass effect skinning a theme park ride who's excited i would be I don't know. <laughs> it depends on which game. I think the I, I think the idea of these rides are cool. I yeah, think so, they'll catch on. And I think they're cool. So what's happening? EA is partnered with uh, California Great America, and they're going to make a 4D ride, which is typically like you put 3D glasses on, and like you, you'll probably be shooting stuff, and like, yeah, have like uh, like water jets or something spray at you. Do they really need to go Mass Effect though? Uh, because what, our, what, what else does EA do? Like Battlefield? What what makes it <laughs> what makes it Mass Effect? Are you going around and trying to have sex with the aliens? Oh, because that's all you do in Mass Effect, right? <laughs> right, that's what it was, right? <laughs> they if they don't have a shop to buy Mass Effect stuff, and when you walk in, it doesn't go. I'm Commander Shepard, yeah. and I approve this store. <laughs> this is my favorite that, is, yeah, that is the thing that yes. happens in a game. The gift shop. Yeah, you're right. They have failed if that doesn't happen. They also fail if there's no dance floor. Yeah. Oh. Crazy white boy dance? Yeah, absolutely. All day. I'm just dancing here, but if you want to pretend you're dancing with me, that's okay. So is this, uh, I mean, I didn't do too much research on this uh, topic, but is this their reply to uh, what Nintendo and uh, Activision did with Universal Studios? I I think they were more like, everyone hates Mass Effect right now, we got cheap. (laughs) So so let's make a ride. (laughs) I I would assume that all the game studios saw what Nintendo did, and they're like, oh man, we could probably get in on the action too. Mass Effect's yeah, a weird one now. But like EA, like what do they have? Sports games? Eh, Battlefield? Battlefront? All of Star Wars? They own Alice. Yeah, but there's no way they they don't have the license yeah, to Yeah, they wouldn't be able to give that They away. have the license for the games, not the merchandise. What else does EA have that would be a good ride? American McGee's Alice. <laughs> it's a <laughs> great go, game. Just I... go to Disney World. No, that's like the lame Alice. I'm talking like the real deal. What if you just go there and creep? Yeah, you could do that. Like cosplay? And call yourself Uncle Owen. <laughs> hey there, children. I'm Uncle Owen. How no, you doing? You're, you're going to make a special list if you go to Disney. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, you're going to be like arrested and put in Disney jail right away. <laughs> what were you doing? I was I was in America Mickey's house. I'm going to come with a fanny pack. Nope. The they, whole day. Disney throws you right out if you come with a fanny pack. <laughs> fanny gonna, fanny packs gonna. are great, by the way. We need to bring those back. How convenient is a fanny pack? All right, let's do, let's get into it. All right, I'm in. I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan sells like he man, does. manly fanny jo- packs. <laughs> Just wait to the official Super Nerd Factory fanny packs. Most people come out with t-shirts. We're going fanny pack. Yeah, that's great. Great for our branding. <laughs> yeah. You got to look at someone's crotch to see our branding. <laughs> next is next is going to be Crocs. It's no different than those chicks walking around with the Victoria's Secrets like fucking pink on the back of their asses. Oh uh, yeah, we're we're coming out with those too. Oh. But but they're for men. <laughs> They're men, they're men yeah. jiggings. Yeah, they're jiggings. I like it, guys. I like it. Yeah, you can go to Disney with those. Um, Wildstar released their free-to-play this week, this past week, and it seemed like there's been huge demand for it. Like, their servers couldn't keep up with how many people were trying to log in. And people have always had good things to say about that game. Well, Are it, you going to try it? Uh, I might since it's free-to-play now. Yeah, it's just another MMO, though. I it is play two pretty consistently, so I can't it, add a third one. It looks good, but it's not something I'm not going to give it a try. I'm yeah, d- I'm they, done. they put a huge update into it because they were going for a more hardcore style MMO where you had yeah. to, where you had to do like 20 quests just so you could go into the raid. All oh, right, now you have to do like two quests and you can go or, into the raid or pay five dollars. Yeah, or pay five. Well, how are the, how is their free free to play free to play doing? The free to play doesn't seem too intrusive on the actual gameplay like it's 90 percent of its cosmetic stuff okay like, well, like you, you can buy like tokens and you can get like transmog gear are they going mounts. straight star wars where you have to pay to take the helmet off i don't i didn't i don't know i'll have to try it to see if that happens <laughs> see, that, that's intrusive i think because that that impedes like if a person has that in the ui like it's set up to do that you should have those options now if you want to get a helmet like something cosmetic like john was saying that's cool because you can live you could function you could do everything like some people it's all about their character so to take options away, I think that would be a bad yeah. uh, idea. Do they still have a pay version? Yeah, you can still subscribe. You you become a signature user. Is like their verbiage uh-huh. on it. Well, there you go. Put your helmet on and off all you want. Yeah, for a monthly fee, right? That's the yeah. Or, is it, if it's a, I'll tell you what. There's a game, The Secret World. You got to pay to be a pimp. 
the Secret World did like a lifetime subscription. I did that. Yeah. And I actually just logged in a couple of weeks ago and was running around. It's cool. I'm just and, so and, far behind. And you were the only person? There? No. There's a lot of people because it's free to play as well. But I get all that like you were saying. Yeah. I think that model works really well if you do like a one time, you give them a premium payment and then you're uh, yeah, cool. I would prefer that, yes. But if you're going to try to charge like whatever wild start, was it 15 a month? Was it the typical? I would assume I so. Don't know. I think it's 12 99 a 12 month. $12.99 a month. Then, I mean, there needs to be more than just... Here you get your function to take your helmet off. I'm not saying – obviously, it's not them doing that. That was from Star Wars. You use the example. But, <laughs> yeah, you know. They have, a, they have a really nice graphic on their site that breaks down what the difference between free and signature gets. Yeah. Like you get priority queue. I believe you get like an experience boost. Like it's nothing really that impedes your – like the gameplay. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, everyone's still toying with what works. Yeah. And the product director, Mike Donnelly, he was in an interview – and they were asking him what his thoughts were of bringing this to console, of bringing Wildstar to consoles, because Neverwinter is an MMO that you can play on consoles, and that's doing really well. I downloaded it and never tried it. Fantastic. Great story. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he likes the idea that they could potentially one day bring this to consoles just because the way free-to-play MMOs are working on like the consoles right now. Yeah. Free-to-play stuff is picking up across the board. Yeah. Good and bad. Yeah, there's a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. So if, if they focus on, you know, it doesn't really impede the gameplay, it just kind of slows you down a little bit. Yeah. That, that's the way to go. Absolutely. Uh, last bit of game news, Twitch beat Dark Souls. They cheat it. Yes and no. Yes. I, I don't count it. So you're not counting that they actually legitimately beat it? They edited it how the game functions. True. They did turn it into a turn-based. Yeah. So, but you, you still had the chat deciding what they did. Yeah. I, I suppose it would have been impossible to beat the game any other way, but I really would have liked them just play for years just to see how far <laughs> they go. They had 903 deaths or something like that. That's actually not that bad. Yeah, but since they went turn-based, uh, yeah, that's you true. Know, there's a lot of live action stuff that you have to roll out of the way for. Did you watch any of it? I watched it when it was when it first launched. And, you know, it was just a broken mess where they're running into... I watched Halo one time and he was staring into a corner for 20 minutes and I never watched it again. And, and Master Chief was out of ammo. <laughs> yeah, he had no ammo. Yeah, I, I, did, I never ch followed up on Halo, so I don't know how, where Master Chief is. No, they beat it a while ago. Did they? Yeah. Some other news... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is getting a comic book. Are you excited for this, Josh? Yeah. I would say I'm, I'm hoping this builds on to the movie and stuff because I think, well, actually, let me ask you. Do you think they go a more mature or do they go... I don't give a shit up. about Power Rangers. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I know. That's headbanging. I, I, never, I never watched Power Rangers. Oh, really? You weren't a Power Ranger fan? Nope. Man. It was on... Matt, were you a Power Ranger fan? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, look at this. It was on before I oh. got home. Yeah, well, you I, had, I had a long ass out of school. I had a long ass bus ride home. All the real, all the real winners did. Yeah, you, did. your childhood's ruined. But I watched Mad Max, or not Mad Max, a uh, show called a uh, cartoon with Max, Mighty Max, Mighty Max. What are you showing us, Matt? <laughs> I, uh, I follow talking uh, to the microphone. Sorry, <laughs> I follow the Green Ranger on uh, Instagram. Dude, he's at every he's at every yeah. any Comic Con there is. And I, I just want to say something like uh, he's like the coolest like uplifting like person to follow like he loves his fans he's always out there like just saying great things like jason david frank man. yeah he's just awesome i mean he he just seems like i've literally seen him at every comic-con i've been but, to. but he's like a down-to-earth cool guy who really appreciates his fans you like he's a pro mma fighter i did i he's mean undefeated as of now but i think he's only had two fights i don't i just think that that deserves he does that dude deserves a shout out because he's really cool yeah in general he is notorious for being a good guy he's not a jerk he's notorious for it He's notorious B.I.G. You just killed this podcast. <laughs> I'm turning this boat around and leaving you on shore. All right. We're having such a good time, too. Oh, man. Huh. Sorry, guys. Last bit of news. Chrome, or oh, I don't know if it was Google, Chromecast. I don't know how their divisions Alphabet. work. Alphabet. Yes. They announced a new Chromecast is going, is going to come out. It's a circle. Yeah, it looks like a button almost. I don't know. It's weird how it looks. It's not like a dongle. Like a circle. But they are making a push to allow casting of your phone games to your TV, which I thought was a cool idea. I don't know how some of those phone games will look on your TV, though. Can't you already do that? Yeah, well, it does have the App Store on there, so it does have games already. So I suppose 
not that weird. All right, wait. So you're saying that you can actually it actually has like space on it to download the games to the de- to the Chromecast device. No, itself? no, you you're, you still need a, a device to cast to it. So, no, currently you can. So yeah. right now, yeah, you could just do a cast to screen. It does it copies your whole screen. It has a certain amount of memory. I don't know. The the article was kind of confusing how they're explaining it, but oh. it's a it's a new version of Chromecast because they haven't come out with a new version for two or three. I years. got the impression specifically. You know how. If you're on a, a network that has a Chromecast, it has like that stream to TV button. It's like a square at the top corner of a YouTube video. Yeah. It's when you're playing a phone game, it has that yeah, to push but, up. But there's an option on Chromecast that actually has, uh, it just mirrors your screen. So like I watched, I have Hearthstone on my phone and I watched that on my TV and it streams perfectly. So you can already stream your entire phone to your TV. So that's where I'm confused. I don't know. I've never messed okay. around with it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what the but details the, of that are. But but they're making a push to do more games from their ecosystem on your TV just because Apple's doing it now. Okay. All Everyone's right. doing it. All the cool kids are peeing their pants. I guess we'll check it out then. Peeing your pants is cool. You can call me Miles Davis. <laughs> but with that, what do you say we move into the Kickstarter weekly highlights? Kickstarter Weekly Highlights are where we go through and we point out the cooler things, in our opinion, for comic book, video game, and tabletop games of the week. If you like any of the stuff that we talk about, check them out quick because they could be ending relatively soon, so don't waste time because you will miss out. Why don't you do a recap for us, John? Sure. So last week, our video game of the week was For the King. They were asking for a little over $30,000. They're currently at $78,000. Pledging ends Friday, October 16th for that, and their estimated ship date on that is June 2016. Our tabletop game of the week last week was Warpath. They were asking for $25,000. They're currently at $317,000. Pledging for that ends Sunday, October 11th, and their estimated shipping for that is September 2016. And our comic book last week was Chroma. They were asking for $15,000. $15,000. They're currently at $6,700. And pledging ends Saturday, October 10th for that. And the estimate shipping on that, there's two dates. There's November 2015 for the digital and December of 2015 for the physical version. Yep, so you still have some time to jump on those. So thank you for those stats, good sir. And moving into this week, the video game of the week is Nosebound. Yeah, so let's go over the stats of that real quick. They're asking for... 13,957, which is a converting from Canadian, currently at 5,635. The pledging ends Friday, October 16th for this, and their estimated ship is May of 2016. And to get in on the game, it's $15. Yeah, so this game is a, I guess it's it's a point-and-click adventure game primarily, but I do believe there are some third-person aspects to this. They're going for a like a film noir style. Yeah, it's a very very noir esque. It's going to be uh, PC only. Uh, we did have a chance to play the demo that they have out there, and you know you really do get that. You know, it's a point and click game, uh, but the the atmosphere since it's noir, you know, it's kind of dark, grimy, crime, yeah. crime scene esque. There have been games that have come out in the past that have kind of touched on a noir feeling, like Max Payne in a way. It kind of fits that. You have, of course, L.A. Noir, but this game like goes for it hundred percent. Like the the way that the dialogue is done and things like that. And for those that don't know, John is a hardcore um, voice actor for Noir. So give us your best Noir voice acting. I'll give you some lines. We need to get out of here. Oh, we need to get out of here. Now say it happier. Oh, we need to get out of here. Now say it like you're super depressed. Oh, we need to get out of here. <laughs> and that, that's that's pretty much it. Like as you can tell, he's an extremely accomplished voice actor. So if anybody needs any any voice work done, contact John directly. I got I got one tone. Can you narrate my life? <laughs> sure, I'll follow you around. <laughs> it's gonna say say Matt, you need to get out of here. <laughs> Matt, you need to stop playing WoW. <laughs> All right, Matt's gone. Or or I'll just follow you around with a tuba. <laughs> 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 But yeah, we we did get a chance to play this. We wanted to to get a feel of of how the how the game plays and things like that. And if you've played point and click adventures, you you certainly have an idea of how that style of gameplay does work. 
uh, we made the biggest new mistake we could have made. And when we're trying to figure out the inventory, we we actually initially skipped the. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I know how point click adventure games work. And we I, know how to play games. And I, I failed. I didn't know how to get to the inventory. Like, oh man, we need the keys to get into the car. It wasn't even a puzzle, and we got stumped because we're stupid. Yeah. For anybody that's as dumb as us, point the mouse to the top of the screen and gets your inventory. I believe that's that's point and click 101. Yeah, we we're just horrible at video games, apparently. <laughs> yeah. We're shutting this podcast down. Or maybe we tricked, we figured out and spoiled the greatest puzzle in the game. Damn it. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting game. If you like noir, you're, you're going to like this game. This is a very mature game. It's got nudity, blood, gore. It kind of hit all the bases for, for uh, hey, little kid, don't play this. And, and they're going for, it's all voice acted in English, but they are doing Spanish subtitles and they want to do a few other subtitles in there for audience around the world. Yep. Yeah, so... I believe they may have put some stuff into the stretch goals for trying to to expand on that. So if you're in a language that isn't in there by default, get your monies in there. Sure. What do you say we move on to the comic book of the week? Our comic book, well, it's a graphic novel. Uh, get it yeah. right. It's called Warrior Saints. They're asking for 12600 It's currently at $16,050. They do have a one stretch goal. For twenty five thousand two hundred, and that is to make it in a hardcover because originally you'll just get it in a soft cover. Pledging ends Friday, October sixteenth for this as well, and the estimated ship date is December of twenty fifteen. Uh, you can get in on two different levels. Thirty dollars gets you a digital copy of both the first book and the second book, and fifty dollars will get you both books, like a physical version. Yeah. So this is the second book in the series, and. The, the first book was called War Gods, which was received pretty well. One thing, so funny story, when we were actually looking into this, into what we wanted to pick for our, our comic book of the week, I had to take a double take on this Kickstarter page because I swore that it was real people on there. The way that the art style is, is ridiculous. Yeah. And I even said, I, I talked to John, I'm like, is this, are these photos or what? What's going on here? It, it's a hand painted, you know, it's digital painted, but. Like the hand painted stuff, it looks so real. Like it looks like an actual photograph of someone. Yeah, it's it's badass. And when I was at looking through screenshots for to pick out what we wanted to put on our article on the site, I got fooled a couple times between the real stuff and the actual the painted stuff. Uh, War Gods, which was the first volume, it's based on the Armenian uh, conversion to Christianity in 301 A.D. and this picks up uh, over a century later in that into that struggle and. As we said, it is based off of a true story, so history can be pretty dark. Yeah, history is pretty brutal. <laughs> the book's going to be around 156 full-color pages. Which is a lot of pages. Yeah, and the, like Josh said, the art the art style just is what blows you away. You don't see a lot of graphic novels that are in this style of art. De- yeah, definitely. You get your more comic booky graphic novels. but And it's kind of funny because the, uh, what's the, what, what is the name of the artist? Or the creator? Uh, Roger, I'm probably going to butcher his last name, Roger Kapulian. As we start doing more research, which you don't have to do that much research to figure this out, but he's actually a visual effects artist, and he's been into some pretty substantial things. He's, uh, I would arguably say the bigger thing he's been in is he helped do the special effects for The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's a pretty big movie. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. If you go to his website, he has he has an unbelievable background in things that he's done, and obviously looking at this art itself, he he kind of knows what he's doing. You get that impression. Definitely. And he worked on a movie that he made himself. It's called East of the Byzantine. It's a documentary. And the book is related to this. Yeah, it's a, it's a, in the same vein, the same storytelling. And if I'm correct on what I've seen, it actually has a similar art style to how it looks. The, the other interesting thing about this that I've never seen before is there is a... There's a, there's a he has a wardrobe... I don't know, a wardrobist? There's a proper word for that, but yes. There is somebody that actually picks the wardrobe out that they use when they're painting these. Yeah, all, all the... Like, that's the kind of detail they All the, they all the costumes are real. Like, all the characters you see, there's a real costume for those people. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, it sounds like they're pushing to try to do a feature film about these, the war gods and the, the warrior saints, which should be interesting. Hopefully, they're, they're able to pull that off. Yeah, Definitely. Uh, we'll move on to our last category, which is the tabletop game of the week. It's called Ragnarol. 
they're asking for $24,499. It's currently at $6,278. Pledging ends Tuesday, October 20th for this, and the estimated shipping is July of 2016. It's $49 to get a copy of the game. And why don't you run down some of the stats for the game, Josh? So it's three to four players. Uh, They say it takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes. And the key thing about this is it is a custom dice combat game. So a lot of dice games and a lot of games itself, they say, hey, we're Norse, we're Norse mythology. This is specifically like an apocalyptic type a survival game. It's, it's these Viking, badass Viking dudes trying to survive as long as they can, struggling for food and things like that. Yeah, the, the concept of the game is you're a Viking clan and you're, you can... You control a whole clan. You can stay and die... Or you can go out and battle other Vikings to take their food because your food source is running low. Yep. Essentially, after every round, you're making decisions. Should I send guys out? Should I feed them? You, you have some decision making. So it, it adds a, a cool layer of strategy to this. And it sounds like they base these kind of rules off of trying to build a lore around there. Because some dice games are like, all right, this is about spaceships. Oh, I got a one. I won. Yeah. Like this actually, if you look at the picture of the dice, like... They're completely custom dice. They have real cool art style on them, and it really helps this fit out. And it's specifically, they mentioned that it's not a game you need a calculator to play because the dice speak for themselves. Yeah, it's a lot of dice games, you you really got to do some hardcore math in there. You're not rolling a D6 and you have to look at a sheet to see what it does. Yeah. Like the, these dice are custom made. So it's like, all right, I have, you know, I rolled the axe card. I'm a, I got this many attack yep. points. So the characters and clans have special abilities to give you certain perks and things like that. So in some ways you are able to control a little bit more out of just the random dice roll. There's certainly a lot of replayability because of that layer. And every hero character has a dog companion. I like how you just quoted the podcast. You air quoted this. I did. But your dog companion, they kind of follow you around. They can do some damage. Or what you can eat them. All right. So I want to talk about this. All right. The designers of this game. So we're all dog people here. I mean, we're not PETA level over here, but Matt, so you're out with your Viking friends. Food's getting a little scarce. Do you eat your fat little dog? No, I love my bulldog. John, do you eat your dog? I can't call your dog fat. Yeah, my, my dog's like the most fit dog ever. See, I have two dogs because I can do a trade off. All right. I probably wouldn't eat my dog. <laughs> Which one of your dogs would you eat? I would eat Tron. I knew it. Tron's a little <laughs> fat ween. It, he's half pit bull, half wiener dog, and he's kind of pudgy. Tally's a pit bull, so I have a chance she may scare people off a little bit more. The but, thing is, I, when I read this article, I legitly thought about what I would do. <laughs> but but Tron's the, like the smarter one. Yeah, Tron's smarter, but who's going to be scared of a wiener dog? So, so what you're saying is you like wieners. <laughs> That's what you're saying. What? Thanks for bringing this podcast down, Matt. <laughs> he's a half pitbull wiener, okay? Hey, Sorry. He's, he's half pitbull. You notice how Josh says that first? Yeah. yeah. They're called uh, dox bulls. That's a thing? He, it, he, <laughs> that, that's what the breed is called, a dox bull. For anybody that's never seen one, look them up online. They're dumb looking. Yeah, you got a pretty <laughs> you, dumb looking you, dog. You, you'd probably eat one, too. <laughs> At least it's better than like a golden doodle. Yeah. What the hell is a golden doodle? Yeah, but... It's a right. gold, golden retriever mixed with a poodle. Oh, if, okay. if, if you're some badass Viking guild and you have a golden doodle, you d- you deserve to starve to death. <laughs> you know, I'd probably eat my own arm before I ate my dog. <laughs> before you eat the golden doodle? <laughs> the golden doodle's going down, but, you know. I would have never taken the golden doodle. No, no. You're a bad person if you take the golden doodle. But it, it's cool. It has different levels like that. It, I, I do respect the fact that they legitly thought into the lore of when you're playing the game. Yeah, definitely. And we did ask them all specific questions. www.supernerdfactory.com. That's where we can go to find all our genius information and check out the article. You can't miss it. It's front page center. And uh, that's obviously where you can find our podcast. But obviously you found it already because you're listening to this. <laughs> if we- you want to find the podcast more, it's there. Well, we do have another podcast called The Break Room. Yep, which we release the first week of every new month. It's it's an interview-based podcast, and we have a new one coming out next week. It's with, uh, his name is Vince, and he, he was, it's an interesting podcast. He was a, a roadie for some bands. He's got a couple tour stories, and he's a photographer that's taking pictures of some pretty big bands. But we went off the rails on that podcast, so expect chaos. Yep. 
and we got a special podcast for Halloween coming out as well. Yep, that that's a good one. Definitely follow our Facebook and our Twitter account. We'll put it out there. Twitter account is Super Nerd Factor. It's a news feed for anything nerdy across the web, so it's a, a general collection of different websites. If you want one place to check out everything, we got it. All right, guys, let's take this ship home. Or crash it into the island. We're going to go out on a three-hour journey and be stuck on a desert island. So this message is probably gonna sound like shit. 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 Probably gonna sound like shit.